I want to say good morning. Good morning. Are you guys going to do the call of worship? Okay. All right. All right. All right. Amen. Thank you, choir. That's our choir, choral call to worship. My name's Steve Walker, pastor here at First United Methodist Church, and I'm grateful for each one of you who have come out on this beautiful Sunday morning. It was a little bit chilly coming out, but it's well worth it to come into this beautiful place and, and have the sun coming through those beautiful stained glass windows. And I want you to know it is a, a magnificent thing that we can come here and be inspired and our souls be lifted up as we worship and honor the Lord. Now, we do have a few announcements, and I always rely on Terry over here <laughs> on some of the uh, announcements. The first one is the uh, Advent study is continuing. We had like 34 people sign up for that. Uh, we meet on Mondays at 3 o'clock here at the church and on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock at the Parsonage. And it was just really, really wonderful. It if, was. It if was you great. happen to, yeah, if you missed the first session, the first session was kind of an introduction. And we went around the room and told one another, you know, a little bit about ourselves. And then uh, dove into uh, the book just a little bit. But now we're going to hit chapter one. So I'm saying that if you missed it, you can catch it this week. And I would encourage you, if you missed it, to come because it is going to be a great study. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. You're very welcome. Very good, very good. The other thing that I see in the bulletin is we do have Christmas decoration that's actually yes. happening right now. Yes, the right? nine, nine o'clock service is actually decorating right now for the Friendship Hall. However, we need... Many of you, if any of you, can come back around 2 o'clock this two afternoon. And we're going to have some little snacky things that you can come and have a snack. But we're going to be decorating the rest of the church. So we need your help. And we have a few things going on inside the church building. So we just have to be a little careful that we don't um, step on their toes. But um, we're hoping to get majority of the church decorated today if if any of you are able or willing to come back we will give you something that's easy to do if you can't do lifting or if you can't do a lot of reaching we'll give you something easy to do but we would we would appreciate any help from anybody and everybody that can possibly help all right all right sounds good uh, we also do have, be, take a look in your uh, bulletin for these announcements, the Christmas food boxes, that's going on. Still a sign-up sheet uh, for delivering those, still available. Uh, Christmas uh, poinsettias, we have the um, uh, gifts for Mary that are happening. Mm -hmm. and Clothesline some, cards. And the clothesline. And we had one celebration at our 9 o'clock service, uh, and it actually uh, came from Katie, who mm -hmm. was really celebrating. Our clothesline ministry is uh, a ministry of need to uh, school children. And she said that the, the need that is hung on the clothesline is, is taken and fulfilled quickly. 
I think she used the phrase, they're going like hotcakes. They do. They go very fast. We have a very generous congregation that yeah. is very willing to step in there and purchase items for children in our school system who couldn't otherwise have those items of clothing. And so, yeah, just purchase, take a ticket, purchase the item, bring it back to the church, and they will make sure that it gets to the children who are in need. And then we also have a guest today, Peggy. Peggy, I'm going to put you on, so raise your hand. Ah. She is with uh, First, First Step Ministry. Oh. First Step Ministry, and we partner with them, mm -hmm. and that helps our community uh, coordinate the benevolent giving of our churches. And so it, that usually is uh, helping someone with electric bill or gas bill in a time of crisis for them. So I just want to recognize, she's just visiting churches to see what's going on, and uh, I wanted to highlight that. Anything else we need to share? Well, just birthdays. Are you ready for birthdays? Oh, not yet, not yet, okay. not yet, not yet. So, <laughs> I get it. So, I, I have to address a rumor, and I just, I can't, you know, certainly our church does not have rumors. That's supposed to make you laugh. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, Anyway, I, I got uh, an email from my superintendent. She was forwarding because uh, she had received, uh, uh, it, it, it was actually a second email uh, that she had received of someone that was uh, thanking her for, for their pastor, for me. They, you know, and that always feels good. So she was forwarding that to me. And this person you know, really was grateful and uh, as part of the uh, Bible, the Advent study. Mm -hmm. and, but one of the things uh, she highlighted, and she was upset, and she told the DS she was upset about that, is that she heard a rumor uh, that her pastor was voted out. So I don't know if you've heard that rumor, that your pastor was voted out. Now, sometimes I can be a little bit of a smart aleck. I can't help that. <laughs> it just kind of comes out. And so, David, the first thing that popped into my mind when I heard that rumor that I was voted out, I thought, I never knew I was voted in. <laughs> so, yeah. As a United Methodist and part of this uh, conference, you receive a pastor through the appointment that the bishop makes. So the bishop makes pastoral appointments. And in fact, as I culminated my 10-year journey to become an ordained elder, at the final ceremony, one of the vows that I took was that I would go and serve wherever the bishop sent me. Right? So it, it's helpful, it may be helpful for you to know that as a pastor taking that vow, I don't, I, don't, I don't choose where I serve. You know, I don't give them a list and say, okay, you need to send me to this church. Right? I, that's not the way it works. I get a phone call and it's basically the bishop saying, okay, this is the church you're going to serve. And I fulfill my vow and go do that. And, uh, and I, was, I was grateful to be able to do that for you and to love you and to walk with you and to figure out where the Lord is leading us as a congregation to be in ministry. So that, that, that's kind of like my response to the rumor. So... Now, you might ask the question, why would there be a rumor like that? Well, folks, people are people, and it kind of works like this. Years ago, I had a friend of mine who had been my district superintendent, and we were sitting down over coffee, and he was telling me one time when he was being introduced to his new congregation, he stood up before them and he said, making the claim, 
I guarantee you that I will make 100% of the people in this congregation happy. 100% of this congregation happy. Now, you can imagine hearing that, that people were doubtful. And so he explained how that works. He said, when I come, 50% of the people are really going to be happy that I'm here. And when I finally leave, the other 50% will be happy. Right? So that's kind of the way it works. So I'm your pastor because the bishop appointed me here. And I'm going to do my best to love you and to work with you as best I can to bring our church into the future that God is calling. And if you, if you want to join me and take my hand and do that, I welcome that help and that cooperation. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we're really grateful for this rich tradition that we have as United Methodist and the wisdom of that tradition that has borne out and borne fruit for hundreds of years. And we thank you for that. We would pray that in our midst that you would become present and that you might cause us to be one in the name of Jesus and strive for that which you call us to. In his name we pray, amen. Okay, now let's go birthdays, birthdays. and anniversary. And we have a lot of them. We do, we have a list. On the 20th today, we have Tim Lukic, Shelly Stevens, and the 21st, Veronica Caragori, the 22nd, Larry Trueblood, the 23rd, Andrew Grimm, David Hootsing, and Rhonda Shelton, the 24th, Tim Daniels, and Crystal Domke, the 25th, Lori Dowdy, Maddie Dowdy, and Susan Taylor, and the 26th, Riley Nichols. And we have two anniversaries. It looks like one of them might have been missed before. So the first one, the 25th, we have Matt and Debbie Boffman. And then on the 16th, which is the one we must have missed, Ben and Karen Udis. Okay? All happy right. birthday, happy anniversary to all those people and to many more. Pardon? Oh, I thought somebody said something. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's all right. stand together and sing our opening song. Do you want us over here?
right, we're going to do prayers of the people, and that was really nice. I appreciated uh, the handbells, uh, even though at the beginning of that song, let's give God a hand for the handbells and the choir. Yeah, and the choir. And I see we, we also have winds for worship over there, so that's coming up a little bit. That is awesome, awesome. And uh, as we come together for prayer, obviously the first thing we want to offer up some celebrations. I'm really grateful that we've got Thanksgiving uh, this Thursday. That is wonderful, and I hope you guys are making preparations for that and are anticipating that. That's always a lot of fun. And then we have Advent, the beginning of Advent. So a week from the day, we actually launch Advent, which is the preparations for celebrating Christmas. And I think that's like one of the most magical times of the year and uh, seeing the decorations and the excitement. And then I love going through the season of Advent. I love the, uh, the sermon series and, and you know what we're going to be highlighting here. And I love the music. And I know Dylan and the choir and whoever else, you guys are all working on that. That is really wonderful. So it's, it's just we're going into a really wonderful uh, season of the church year and a, and, a, and a natural season as well. But we do have, uh, uh, you know, some prayer concerns. And I kind of say this as a little bit of a joke, but if you think about it, it's a little more serious. So I was, I was at a big box store uh, the other day, and they had all of their beautiful... Um, was snow machines, you know, snow blowers setting out there. Have you seen, have you been to one of the big box stores and they got all the, the beautiful snow blowers out front? No? Okay, well, I have, I have. <laughs> and uh, I just noticed, and it was all guys, I just noticed the number of men that would stop before going into the store and admire longingly that snowblower. <laughs> and I realized that's, that's how you know it, winter is here. And so we need to pray for those men that they get overtime or whatever so they can afford to buy a snowblower because, you know, you need it. Amen. All right. Anything else you guys want to lift up today? We're doing the bread pan today, water for Africa. Bread pan today, water for Africa. And you know, that has been, I know the United Methodist Church has started that a long time ago to help communities uh, with uh, digging wells and, and providing pumps. And of course, now it's all solar. The pumps are solar. In fact, if you go out west, I've hiked out west, and almost every, you know, they used to have the wind the windmills, you know, with the pumps out, and they would pump water for the cattle. They were just freely roaming. Well, now it's all solar. You go there, and there's, they've got a solar cell and battery backup and everything, and they're pumping water that way. So that's what's happening in Africa, and our bread pan is going for that, and I appreciate our mission team, another celebration. Anything else you want to lift up? All right, so, yeah, yeah, Carrie's pleased, so only two days of school this week, and then the kids are out, and, and, and all the staff's out, too, so that's great, that's great, all right, well, if nothing else, if you would bow your heads with me as I lead us in this time of prayer. Oh, precious Lord, be present with us today as once again we gather in your we call upon your name and we do so anticipating that you will hear us and you'll fulfill your promise and to become present and we would ask for each soul gathered here that you might bless us with throughout the worship service having those moments when we can sense your presence we can feel your presence and we can once again be encouraged 
once again find life and find it abundantly. We give praise to you, Lord, and we thank you for your goodness and your mercy and for this place of worship that you've called us to. Bless your people this day as we come in the strong name of Jesus. And hear the thanksgivings that come from our lips, especially this week as we anticipate Thanksgiving Day itself. May we offer up to you a word of thanks for those things most simple in our lives and yet most profound. As we think about our homes and our families and our friends, first we're really grateful, really grateful for having warm homes, of having running water, of having well-designed septic systems. We're really grateful for we flip on a switch, a light goes on. We're grateful for having homes that when we walk into them, we feel safe. We feel comfortable. We're grateful for the most simple things in life of a laugh shared, of food shared, We thank you, Lord. But we know that there are those that are doing without. We know that there are those that struggle with having a place to live, with paying the bills. And there might be all kinds of reasons why that is so. Sometimes the blame lays at the foot of the one experience in it. But sometimes, sometimes it is of no fault of their own, but circumstances beyond control. And each one of us know what that's like. So, Lord, our prayers are with those who are hurting, those that are trying to find wholeness, our prayers are that you'll help us to see and help us to continue to do what we can, wherever we can, for as long as we can. Oh, we're so grateful for our United Methodist men, for our mission committee that, that helps us to, to do what can be done and keeps that before us. That gives us life more. So here are the prayers of your people. Our prayers on behalf of those who need healing and wholeness. For those that need forgiveness and restoration, come now and give such. We pray in the strong need of Jesus and together with one voice pray as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand and join us in singing. Oh, no, we're not doing that yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> you threw me off. Um, we continue on with our service now with the giving of God's tithes and our offerings. As the ushers come forward, I ask you to turn your hearts and minds towards Christ as we listen to special music.
Now would you please stand and join us in the singing of our doxology. join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to help us forgive and to be more loving toward others. Bless these gifts to your service. Amen. You may be seated. Our Bible reading this morning is from the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. You can find that on page 1592 in your pew Bible if you're interested in following along. 
Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophet, prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. This ends the reading from the Gospel of Luke. Oh, I'm on. Very good. <clears throat> what Terry read is a hymn that praises and recalls the promises of God and the beginning of their fulfillment. Zechariah, priest and father, sang it unto the Lord of John the Baptist, his son. The salvation of God's people was now breaking into their midst. And it would be a time of mercy, of liberation, of freedom and light. And through this song that Zechariah both composed and sang, we will discover the why of our devotion. Because this song expresses three movements that God makes. One, that God remembers. Two, that God acts. And three, God redeems. Zechariah's song says that the goal of God's saving mercy is to serve God. And we serve God in three ways, as suggested by this hymn. We serve God in holiness and in righteousness and in making peace. So let's explore how we can appropriate this why and this meaning from this song today. And I'll begin with listening and learning. One of my observations throughout life is that in order to grow, in order to mature, in order to learn, in order to gain wisdom, you have to have the ability to keep your mouth shut and your ears open. Have you ever been in a meeting and afterward you discovered upon reflection that you have done way too much talking and not enough listening? I always love that in, in any kind of meeting for any kind of group, there's, there's always group dynamics of the people with the highest social status in the group will do the most talking because they're trying to gain respect. They're, they're trying to establish themselves as being dominant. And so there's a natural tendency among any of us, to want to increase our social status 
and often will do that by talking. But when we reflect upon that and that dynamic, often what we miss is the listening. And when we miss the listening, we fail to know the heart and the mind of the other. Have you ever been so absorbed in what you're going to say next that you realize you didn't hear what the other person said? We've all been down that road. And we've all said with wisdom to ourselves, I need to talk less and listen more. And that is a good thing. Stop talking, listen, pay attention. And that's an important dynamic in our walk with Jesus, in our walk of discipleship. Because the walk of discipleship is a walk of learning and of growing and of having deeper understanding. A deeper relationship with the divine and a deeper relationship with one another. To that end... And that purpose, I see that wisdom being expressed in our story with Zechariah in the first chapter of the book of Luke. Zechariah is a priest who's of the lineage of Aaron, a family of priests. Zechariah attends to the matters pertaining to worship at the temple. I find the character of Zechariah particularly appealing to myself, mostly because of the commonality that I have with Zechariah, a priest who attends to the worship at the temple. And so I naturally, as an ordained clergy member, can identify with that. I can identify with how he is always wanting to hear from God, and sometimes he does. And so our Bible story tells us that God comes to him to tell him that he and his wife will finally have a child, and that child will be a forerunner to the Messiah. And his son will be named John the Baptist. Now, Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth are really old folks. And as I look out on this congregation, a few of you, I'm not going to qualify it, but like me, you're old. And there are certain things that our culture says and thinks about people that are old. That their time is past. That they don't have anything more to contribute. That they're stuck in their ways. They're resistant to change. On and on and on it goes. Is God done with you yet? Is God done with me yet? What can God do? So the word of the Lord comes to Zechariah. And God is saying, you have service yet. 
you are still an instrument of my choosing. I will work wonders through you and your wife Elizabeth. Now, this story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, of having a child in their old age and of being the instruments of God's salvation, breaking forth into the world, what story does that remind you of? Another story in the Old Testament. I know some of you are thinking about two people in the Old Testament advanced in age, Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah. And God came to them and said, you're going to have you're going to have a child. And it was through Abraham and Sarah that the very foundations of God's redemption that we enjoy today was begun. Through those two old folks. Don't ever underestimate the good Lord. Don't ever underestimate the good Lord in your life and what God is yet wanting to do through you. And I want you to know this is meaningful to me because I'm an old guy now. I called up and was talking to a sister of mine now. I was adopted. I just found out that I had half-sisters, right? I just call them sisters. And uh, one of them lives in Terre Haute. Her name is Shannon. And like I said, I just found out I had them like, like a year ago. And I was a little bit of a surprise to them. But I got the DNA test, found them, and now I know them. And I, I was talking to her, and, and uh, she was talking about, you know, I said, well, when are you planning on retiring? And she said, well, golly, I, I've got, i probably got like 15 more years before I retire. And she says, what about you? And I stopped, and I kind of caught myself, and I was like, well, I'm only a few years away. I didn't realize I was that old. But for me as a pastor, the question is, can God still use me effectively? Can I be a vehicle of God's grace? of God's wisdom, of God's teaching. I don't believe in my power, but I do believe in the power of the one who calls me by name. And I share that with you because not only is that meaningful for me, but I want it to be meaningful for you at whatever age you are. So Zechariah hears the promise of God and receives it. And he is overcome with disbelief, right? And, and that happens to us. Sometimes we don't have faith in the power of God. We just have disbelief. And it was interesting how God handles that situation. And what God does is he causes Zechariah to not be able to speak. Interesting. Now some people reading the story, when they get to that point and Zechariah expresses disbelief that God's going to do what God said he's going to do, and God responds by silencing him. Some people would look at that and immediately think that's God's punishment. And I often think about why a person would come to that conclusion. And I realize that a lot of the ways in which we understand God and think about God is based upon how we experience our parents. And we map that to our heavenly parents. 
And so I realized that some people grew up and maybe they had a parent that was very disciplinary on them. In other words, they, they got disciplined all the time. Maybe they grew up and they had a parent that they were afraid of. They'd get a whipping or they'd get a beating and it was frequent. And so they think about God in that way. And they read this story and they read where God silences Zechariah to the point where he can no longer speak and view that as punishment. But then there are others that read that and understand that God gave Zechariah a gift. That the silence was a gift. Because it's in the silence that you can listen. And it's in the silence that you can hear. One of the things that I, I like to do, I do twice a year with a buddy of mine. I go to St. Minard. We often go there. We've gone other places, but St. Minard in near Santa Claus, Indiana. Uh, yeah, there's an arch abbey there, and then they have a retreat center there, and it's just a wonderful place to go. And often, as part of our, our retreat, uh, is, is a time of silence. And there is a tradition there at the Abbey that if you're walking down the hallway and you're in the silent retreat mode and someone's coming your way, you make this sign so that they know that you're on a silent retreat and not to speak to you. Isn't that something? The practice of spiritual silence. So Zechariah is silent. And now he's listening. And now he's hearing from God. And his disbelief becomes belief. His misunderstanding becomes understanding. And at the conclusion of his silence, he is not only able to speak, but he is able to sing. And he sings that song that Terry read to us. And it is a song that celebrates what God now is doing in the world, that the Messiah is about to enter into history and that his son, John the Baptist, is going to prepare the way to make it easy for the very kingdom of God to become present. And he calls upon us to understand what our role is of why it is that God is saving us why it is that God is forgiving us because God is calling us to be holy, to sanctify every part of our lives to him. That God is calling us to be righteous, to be in that right relationship with the divine and that right relationship with one another. That God is calling us to be messengers of peace. The great peace between us and God and the great peace among one another. When I think about our devotion, I think about why we're devoted. And I think about this song that Zechariah sings. We are devoted because of what God is doing and calling us to be. Let us pray. 
Oh, gracious Lord, we are grateful and we give praise to you that you have remembered your promises of old and are now fulfilling them in your mighty acts through Jesus the Christ. We give praise to you that such lead to our redemption and the redemption of the world. Help us to give ourselves to you in holiness and in righteousness and in peace. In the name of the Lord we pray, amen. Let's stand together for our closing song. to abide come
brothers and sisters in Christ, it is time for us to go from this place, and I would pray that you would hear and receive once again the good news of Jesus. In his holy name, your sins are forgiven. Rise and walk to new life. Amen. Thank you.